Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening. Tonight, we've got Jackie Devereaux with us. Jackie um, is a member, has been a member of the society for two years. And this is the second time she's won um, the Daniel Smith Award in our selected exhibition. Clearly, Jackie's use of color is exceptional, and that's what the judges have picked out. Um, I'd like to take the opportunity before we start talking to Jackie to thank our sponsors, Premium Art Brands, who are the UK um, distributors of Daniel Smith watercolors. Uh, and they have supported us for the last couple of years, which has been fantastic. And I think Jackie has already got her prize from this year. So she's got plenty of paint to keep her going. Um, Jackie, before we start talking about the painting, I'd like to ask you a little bit about your painting journey and when you started, what what made you start to paint and why you love it. So would you like to give us a quick overview of your painting career? Okay, a very quick overview. It goes back, it spans uh, virtually my entire adult life, um, beginning with um, calligraphy in the early days and uh, uh, illustration which grew into graphics and I went to St Albans Art School for, to um, study printmaking so it's quite a broad spectrum and um, but somewhere along the way uh, whilst I was exhibiting I I was thinking I'd like to try watercolour so I found I found someone to show me the basics and um, she was actually an oil painter but uh, she she was very good on colour and and I owe her a lot uh, sadly she's no longer with us but um, so once I hit the watercolour trail which must be must be in the mid 70s early to mid 70s I just got totally hooked and I've been that way ever since. It's like a drug and I can't leave it alone. I, I used to do a lot of pastels, but I don't do that anymore. I occasionally uh, get into oils, but they're usually quite small, intimate um, uh, studies. But I'm always back then onto, onto the watercolour. I don't want to lose the handle I've got on it, which I feel is, is uh, really exciting every time I go in the studio, which is every day most of the day um i'm i'm just excited about what what's going to come out of my brush and my work although it's the work that you're looking at going to be looking at today is quite um sculptural and studied there's a lot of loose work in there it starts off with a big splash and then i start to mold the color and and layer and put in take out put in take out constantly and i think what drove me into that was reading somewhere along the line and i can't remember the guy's name but someone writing in a magazine um you should never with watercolor use any more than three layers and i'm like really okay I think um, I think I'll prove that's wrong, and um, so choosing colours carefully and uh, mostly in, in harmony with each other, with the occasional blast of of, of, of um, a complementary. It's it's uh, it's an exciting exciting road, and I, I still do the odd illustration. I still do printmaking, which I run courses in as well, and of course ink is my um, so there we are. Fantastic. And and um, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I think all of us who are members of the society know exactly what you mean about watercolour being such an exciting medium. It's it's it, it does catch you and and carry you along. Right. Let's have a look at your painting. And then I'd really love to talk to you a little bit about some of the aspects of the painting. So this is Jackie's painting. It's called A Bowl of Cherries, The Bowl of Cherries, I think. Um, and um, so let's let's start with talking about composition. You know, what was your approach to this painting? Where um, did you start? Start in the middle usually, and work out. I usually I always work on a large, a really large sheet of paper, A1, um, bigger if I can get hold of it, and um, and I start to plot. And this composition. I'm not looking for um, a standard sort of golden section, if you like, although I usually bring that in at some stage, but I'm really looking at wanting to wanting to encourage the eye to wander around the painting. So it's like a journey around it. And um, so I started with the bowl, which is virtually central. 
and all these things exist but they don't exist in front of me at the time particularly i don't get things and um if i think a painting like this needs something else in it i'll go and search around the house for something or go to a charity shop and buy something that is the right shape to go in and um so if that helps that's how it started the shape of the bowl of the bowl so you so you have a collection in your studio of interesting shaped I, items <laughs> fantastic and and the layering would you have you got any tips because i i completely get what you're saying about the layering that is exactly what we all are all told and you know the the, the sort of when you start painting in watercolors there's this belief that if you paint too many layers you're going to end up with mud and clearly you do not end up with mud um you know roughly how many layers have you got in this painting and how do you make sure that you don't get mud when you're painting in so right. many layers um i couldn't tell you how many layers because it's been built and built and then i take them away i i wipe them out as well with sponge magic sponge quite quite useful um i cut shapes out of acetate and lay them on and wipe out um areas and then put colors back in again and then i usually in in this particular painting it, the the layers will be built up with quite delicate um, layers of colour, it's not a heavy, um, even the dark jugs in, in the uh, background. They're built up of, with several layers and I'm trying to remember and I can't see it very well on my phone, but there could be five, six, seven layers in the jugs alone. And so all told probably i i could say even there are 10 layers i reckon in there wow. built up that's amazing and, and you, you get sorry carry on no you, you just gently um gently stroke them in um but i also sometimes if it's getting too careful I'll, I'll wait for it all to dry and then i'll i'll just go in with a really big brush i use um i use a, a filbert this thing can you see that yeah 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 large filbert which is my right hand man and i'll just wash over in dabs big dabs of of uh of very loose color and then with a piece of tissue just lift off bits and then wait for bits to dry go in again and i will quite unashamedly want to create cauliflowers which i know was, is used to be a really nasty word in the old days. Um, but nowadays, it's, I, I find them so, they, they mesmerize me the way they form. So I'm waiting for bits to dry, drop in a bit of water, drop in a bit of color. Um, and then I know, if I because I always use really good paper, so I can I can put on any amount of, of paint and, and I won't go through it, it, it just, that that's amazing. And you get, I think as a result, you get an incredible richness and depth in, in, in your colours, which is, is fantastic. Jackie, um, I, two last questions very quickly. One was um, a quick one from me. Do you make sure that you always use transparent colours when you're doing the, the layering? If Yes. If I'm okay. using anything, I've got, I've got one I can see on my wall here, which is uh, Rhapsody in Blue. And it's it's very similar with, with different objects. You but always a bowl um, as a starting point. But um, I love um, turquoise, cobalt turquoise light, which is so opaque. So if I'm using that, I'll use it first. And um, or if I, if I need to put it over the top at all, I'll make sure it's got lots of water in it. So that will involve then, if I want to build up that color, that will involve several layers of that building right. it up. So that although it's opaque or semi-opaque, semi um, because no watercolour is totally opaque, as you know, um, yeah. but it, you can then um, eliminate that kind of uh, coating that it can, it can create by just using okay. it very, very wet. Fantastic. Okay, we've got a couple of questions coming in via Facebook. One was um, from Laurie, how long does it take you to create a painting like this with all these layers? <laughs> um, that's how long is a piece of string but <laughs> it's um, well it depends on on the weather I, I lived in the south of France for over 20 years and I developed most of my um, uh, character as a watercolorist in the south of France painting outside 
that's what ruined my eyesight. Um, but painting outside dried really quickly, so it had to be really, really wet, and uh, you know, speed was of the essence. So I, I didn't have to wait very long for it to dry to go into the next stage. Whereas at home here now in England, um, mm. it's a whole new ball game because unless it's really hot, I'm working on one at the moment in the studio, and and I'm like, oh God, it's just taking forever, and I. <laughs> I don't use a hairdryer because I don't like what it does to the paper, but I just have to wait for it to dry. Um, mm. So I'll go off and do something else. So I'm usually, I've got a whole stack of other little experimental bits that I'm working on for the next painting, waiting for this other one to, to dry. So, so it can, something like this, which is, um, I'm trying to think of the size of it. It's about 35 centimetres wide by... 45 or 48 or something like that so it's not terribly big um and that could have taken me uh, over a period of maybe a week to 10 days right okay because you've really got to get if you're layering you really have to let each layer dry don't you before you go in uh, with the next one yeah, yeah but also that's... i'm lifting off i need it to be totally I, perversely to to get the shop um yeah finish I need for it to totally dry to go in then with my acetate my magic sponge and I'm lifting off then waiting a bit and then putting a bit back so it's it's a whole it's like building a puzzle really yeah very exciting because I never know Absolutely. quite what's going to work <laughs> fantastic and um the other question was what kind of paper do you use right this one I've used um uh, Bockingford, Bockingford, um, cold pressed, 300 grams, and it takes an enormous amount of, of um, punishment. And I use that paper a lot these days because I do a lot of 3D work where I'm cutting, tearing, um, shredding, um, curling it up, doing all sorts. And, and it's so pliable and wonderful to use. So People can be a bit sniffy about booking for, but I, it's it's good. It costs a whole sheet, an A1 sheet costs less than a cup of coffee, and I reckon that's really good value. It's pretty good value. <laughs> My other favourites are Arch or Arches, um, Arch Rough, and I love Arch Satin, but that that's really takes a lot of handling if you're using a lot of water, um, and Hanamula, Hanamula. Right are oh, fantastic and I'm yeah. I'm once I'm working on it at the moment I'm using Hanamula's um I don't think it's sized even it, or if it is it's only a very little size and all the all the wiping out I'm actually taking layers of paper off so that creates oh, wow. lovely um uh textures as I'm working it's so soft it's like working on fabric and uh, so not to be not to be recommended for the for the weak hearted no, I think you have to be brave doing that, yeah. <laughs> taking that off. Jackie, thank you. It's been really interesting talking to you. This has been fantastic. Thank you for your time and congratulations on your award. Well, well deserved. It's such a beautiful painting. Thank you. Um, we're having lots of comments in coming in over Facebook about how interesting people are finding this um, and how much they love this painting. Oh. So um, we're thrilled to have it in the exhibition. And for, those, for everybody watching, we will put a link to the exhibition in um, the comments down below. And I'll probably put one in the post at the top afterwards. Um, so if you haven't already gone to the exhibition to have a look at the paintings and have a good look at Jackie's bowl of cherries painting, uh, you'll be able to do that straight after this. And this video will go up on a YouTube channel uh, within the next 24 hours. So thank you very much for watching. There will be another video scheduled for the next, in, in a couple of days time. And I think we're actually gonna release a pre-recorded video tomorrow. So I hope you're all enjoying our series of online events as part of our exhibition. And thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful evening. Bye everybody. Bye.